So if we're talking about the near-term future of robotics, uh, there are basically two areas where we're going to see a lot of demand for new consumer-facing robotic applications. One is coming out of Japan. In Japan, they have an aging population, and they're really unwilling to bring in foreign workers to help their elderly population. So in Japan, you're going to see the development of a lot of robots that sort of help elderly people uh, survive and live happily. So a lot of robots that can interact with humans and look realistic. Uh, conversely, in America, we have a lot of demand for things like vehicle robotics. You see from the DARPA Grand Challenge, people are trying to make new vehicle systems uh, and uh, more industrial robotics, uh, not so much into the human interaction. Vehicle systems is going to be big, yeah. Also, uh, health care of the elderly is something that I think a lot of, we're going to see a lot of robotic involvement in. Uh, also, uh, depending on what you mean by near term, I think there's going to be a lot more in terms of unmanned vehicle type of robots. Uh, the ground-based stuff is not, I, I don't think, is as interesting um, because they're so constrained by things like walking up hills. I mean, there's a lot of work to do to get past that barrier, but uh, unmanned aerial vehicles are uh, trying to get integrated into the same airspace as manned aerial vehicles, and we think that can happen by 2012, 2013. Um, and as soon as that happens, I mean, people are going to have personalized things that they can, you know, throw out of their backpack that's going to go ahead, scout for traffic, or latch onto their car. Uh, that's where I think it's going. One thing that probably concerns your field is the notion of uh, a spectrum of autonomy. The idea that you have robots that uh, can act autonomously, but at any time they can request human input. There's this idea that our robots are sort of all part of the same networks that we're a part of, and there's no real good reason to treat a robot as a self-contained entity. At any time, you ought to be able to sort of reach in, you know, stick your hand up the robot's butt and, and move its lips if you need to. Uh, so there's this whole notion of where in that spectrum of autonomy do your robots lie? Are they ever going to act fully autonomously? Are they ever going to be fully teleoperated? Tele or can you sort of uh, find a, a space in between where your robots can live? Right. Also, um, battery uh, power, power sources, is a big deal, right? I mean, a lot of, a lot of them are still gas power. That's horrible. So electric power is taken over, and these new LiPo batteries are a lot more lightweight and a lot um, uh, can last a lot longer, which is just awesome. But um, it's not long enough, you know. So we, we need to, to get some better power sources to get longer lifespan of these things uh, and faster recharge times. Yeah, uh, I definitely agree on the power systems. Uh, generally speaking, the, the mechanical components that go into the robots are going to go undergo a lot of uh, change in the next couple of years. Um, uh, you were talking about cheap sensors. Cheap sensors are definitely a huge yeah. part of that. And faster networks, the fact that we can put our robots in environments where you know, they can communicate with one another, act in uh, multi-agent ways, or they can communicate with expert systems at the edges, uh, putting all the intelligence at the edges, either in the form of very, very powerful computers that wouldn't fit on your robot, or in the form of human beings who can, who can step in and interact. At the same time, you definitely need to have very good power systems because you want these robots to be able to uh, sort of act autonomously as possible for as long as possible in the field. Right. Uh, also, another big area that's looking a little bit more long-term is swarming and how these things interact with each other. Um, because uh, as they become cheaper and more prolific, uh, the way that we deal with the systems engineering aspect of them, uh, how, how we deal with 10,000 of them at, at the same time, is going to be a differentiator between us and other countries, especially in military applications. I think we could probably talk about this for hours, yeah. but uh, I think you know, that's there's a, so many topics. That's a good place to stop. That's a good couple of minutes from after. You probably know more than I do.